forget about the recording. Say again. <laughs> I was just saying, oh, don't forget about the recording. <laughs> You've just done it. Okay, cool. So welcome everybody. Um, let me just try and do this. All right, so um, welcome everybody. If you join us, uh, this is the March um, edition of our Everything Astronomy section. Um, so if this is the first time you're joining, you're welcome. And uh, we will start the section shortly. So whilst we wait, um, I think you can put a little introduction about yourself, maybe what you like doing, where you're joining us from um, in the chat. Um, and I think people will also share this and uh, yeah, we can kind of uh, engage ourselves with those things whilst we wait. Um, and whilst that is happening, um, I just want to say that this is a special edition um, in the sense that we'll be talking about something different, something not really related, I'll not say really, really related, but um, something not directly astronomy, but um, indeed related to astronomy, which would be, we will be talking about satellite in general and um, specifically talk about CANSATs. So you're welcome and um, I hope you guys would enjoy um, yeah, a great time today. So let me just check the chat and see if people are putting some stuff in there. Um, so we have Kwabena um, who says, I'm good to connect with you all, great, um, yeah. And then um, he says, uh, my name is um, Kwabena Adomeji um, Longdon. Um, I'm chief executive of um, Tech Farm Hub. Okay, so that's great. You're welcome, Kabana. Um, we also have Davis, who is one of our regular participants. Um, so just because of Davis, I should say that these sections are open to the general public and um, it doesn't matter what age you are. And um, Davis is a young student who is very passionate about astronomy and um, a lot more. Um, yeah, so great. Thank you, um, Davis. We also have Salom um, who says um, from Ghana, I'm excited about today's section. Thank you. And, and of course, Sarah says, welcome everybody. Um, Sarah joining from Accra, Ghana. Thank you, um, Sarah. And Kabana says um, located, okay, so you're saying Tech Farm is located in Kofubia, um, in the Eastern region of Ghana. Cool. I like the Eastern region. That's where I went to high school, so yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that, Solomon. I've learned something new already today. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, I went to, actually, I think it's the highest point in Ghana, um, Abitifi Quill. So, yeah, it's, and it was very cold there. So. Oh, I bet. I bet. Yeah. I think it's the highest point in Ghana, like habitable point in Ghana. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's right. So cool. Um, so yeah, so people can put um, anything about themselves in the chat and we can um, share. Um, okay, yeah, so a message from Daniel um, says, hi, I'm Daniel joining from Ghana, excited for today, that's great. Um, Neil says, my name is Neil, I'm based in London. I'm a tech geek with a particular interest in aerospace and space technology. I'm very interested to see what this is all about. So great, uh, welcome Neil. Um, thank you for joining. Um, so you can also share with us um, where you are joining us from. Um, because in the reg registration, I saw a lot of people from outside Ghana. So it would be cool if you introduce yourself and so that we know that um, I mean, you're also here with us. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I guess we'll give another five or three minutes or? Yeah, well, maybe just a couple of minutes. Okay. Yeah, it's good to see everybody joining. So I said, if you're, if you're just joining, as Solomon was saying, you can, in the chat, if you can put your name 
where you're joining us from and then maybe something about yourself or, or why you've joined today. Um, we do use tend to use the chat a lot and uh, again if you may not have heard if you just joined we this session is open to everybody all ages uh, so we do have youngsters as well as adults so uh, the chat is a great um, feature so but if we just ask please keep all your your chat uh, messages family friendly uh, and you know we'll be asking questions and uh, you know the questions will be you know for some people they might be easy for some people that might be challenging so just to be respectful of everybody um, so that we everyone can feel comfortable and enjoy themselves because what we we just want everybody to learn uh, and enjoy the session so we want everyone to feel feel free thank you Sarah good evening Jiwaji Nice for us to you to join us. You want Tanzania to go to space? Yeah. <laughs> hey, yeah. yeah. It's, it's always a dream for the for some years. Uh, why not? Why not? Wonderful. <laughs> Thank you, sir, <laughs> for this for organizing this also. Yes. No problem. And also, hello, Zion Glory. This is my first time. Excited to be here from Ghana. Good. Thank you for joining. Don't miss anyone else out yeah i think you also missed um from anita um oh, also sorry, from sorry. tanzania um you said um ordinary member of astronomy and space science association of tanzania so thank you you're welcome um anita you're welcome uh, okay so you all says hi hi Okay, so maybe in the next two minutes, we can um, start today's section. Yeah. So I think whilst we wait, um, I should say that uh, today's section, I mean, if this is your first time, we have different, different sections in the section itself. So um, at any point, if you have any question about anything, um, it could be about, say, just the introduction, it could be about a talk, it could be about anything, just put it in the chat and we will do have time where we would um, ask people to ask their questions or go to the chat and try to answer those questions. So feel free at any point, if you have any questions, just put in the chat and uh, later we can get to that. Thank you. Yes, and again, for for if you're if you're new, um, the idea of these sessions is we have them every month, uh, last Saturday of the month, um, and the idea is we each time we discuss some theme to do with astronomy or space science. Uh, we started this last mm -hmm. year. Um, this year we're trying to um, always include a guest speaker because we think that's interesting to have somebody who's maybe working in a particular field who can give us a bit more information about it. So so that's what we tend to do. Uh, and then we, off, we also might also talk about general astronomy news if we have time, but uh, also what's in the night sky, because uh, it's great. we like to encourage everyone to look up in the night sky. Even if you don't have a telescope, sometimes it's surprising what you can see just with your naked eye or with binoculars. So we have a few different sessions like that. Um, and you're welcome to join us every month. And if you have ideas for maybe a, a subject you'd like us to to cover, you're welcome to send that to us later or put it in the chat or something. Right, so thank you. So I, think I think we can start now, yeah. yeah. All right, um, so like I said, um, today is the, um, the March edition of the Everything Astronomy. Um, so these are sections where we have, um, sometimes we invite special guest speakers to talk about specific topics. So um, I think in the last month, really, we talked about JWST, which is one of uh, NASA's latest um, space telescopes to um, have to be 
to have been sent to space. So we talk a little bit about that and we invited a researcher to talk about this. So uh, in this month or um, to um, finish up this month, we are having a section which will be on satellite. And um, if you have seen in our ads, um, it says that how to build your own satellite. And we are going to specifically learn about how Ghanaian students are actually um, doing stuff like that. So it happened to be that I'm a special guest speaker for today. And also we have Eric Oben, um, who is also from um, Electronics, uh, which is uh, an electronics company in Ghana and also um, slightly related to um, KMST. So you're welcome and I hope you guys will enjoy today's section. So um, usually uh, the section is hosted by myself. So I'm Solomon Kwekua Peke. Um, I'm a science and astronomy communicator. Um, and I also do work with a young space startup in Ghana called XP Solutions. Um, and also um, a research stu student at the University of Leeds um, here in the United Kingdom. Um, we also have Sarah Bochi Masters, who I usually co-host the section with. I'm sorry if you can say hi or just wave. <laughs> All right, so that's Sarah. Um, and she's the weekend's event coordinator at the Ghana Planetarium Science Center, and also um, working with the African Astronomical Society. So sometimes we go to different parts of the universe and if you can see this image, this is me on the planet Mars, which is my favorite planet. And Sarah tagged along, so yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, apart from uh, some of these things we do, um, we have a place called the Ghana Planetarium, which is in Ghana, Accra. Um, it's around Osu um, 12 um, extension, I think so. Um, and um, this is a place where you can go to and have an experience, and a, a real ast astronomy experience. So um, if you happen to be in Ghana, I would advise you to visit the Ghana Planetarium Science Center um, and you can get to watch a planetarium show. Um, sometimes we have hands-on science demonstrations, uh, telescope viewing events, among some other wonderful events. So you should definitely visit um, this place. Um, so as part of this um, section, we also have um, the Young Space Startup that I told you about, which is Xavier Space Solution. Um, they actually, in general, um, teach kids or um, teach people how to code uh, robotics, electronics, and um, lead um, special projects such as um, the one that we are going to talk about today, which is the Ghana Cancer Rocketry Championship. So in the end, um, X Space Solution is a young space startup, which means we'll be looking forward to having to do stuff like building their own satellites, launching these into space, and maybe one day um, have a person on the moon or somewhere. So um, that's about X Space Solution, and you can go to the website and um, find out more there. So I think this is um, that from me from now and I'll hand over to Sarah to do um, the rest of the introduction. Thank you. You're muted. Helps if I unmute, yes. <laughs> yes, let me just share a few slides. Let me make sure I'm in the right place. Yes. So. Okay, so I hope everyone can see my screen. Yes. So as I said, these sessions are for everybody. Um, and because we don't know what experience people will have before they come, I'm just going to do a very brief, basic introduction to satellites for, for, for people who you know may not be very familiar. Uh, so, uh, and again, so now I'm going to ask some questions of you. So satellites, we're banding this term around. So what, what is a satellite? So is there anyone who'd like to put in the chat what they think a satellite is? Um, so we have Davis who has raised his hand. So okay. maybe Davis, you want to go on and unmute and quickly just tell us. <laughs> yes, go ahead, Davis. Um, a satellite is an artificial body placed in orbit around the Earth. Amazing. Okay, Thank good. Thank you so much. Good. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to add to that or, or thinks it might be different? Or And of course, feel free to put it in the chat. Uh, you don't have to necessarily speak if you don't want to. Um, so we have um, Zion. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it properly. Yeah, so you have raised up your hand. A satellite is the body that rotates around another body astronomically due to the gravitational pull that falls or the body that rotates around. Amazing. Great, great. Thank you. 
Okay. okay. Um, we also have a message from Faith who says smaller body <coughs> revolving around um, a larger body in space. So thank you, Faith. Great. Good, good. So that's good to hear. So yes, basically a satellite is, is in the most general terms, it's just a smaller body orbiting around a larger body. Um, and it can be natural or artificial. Um, usually, in fact, when, when we use the term satellite, uh, I mean, often I think we are talking about the artificial satellites, but you can have natural satellites and artificial satellites. So in other words, uh, you know, a moon uh, that's orbiting a planet is a satellite. You know, a planet can be a satellite and, and then a machine, something man-made can also be a satellite. So, oh, let me just move something. Yeah, okay, so yeah, so the moon, our moon, uh, that's our only natural satellite. Um, our planet, the Earth, can also be considered a satellite because it's orbiting the sun. Uh, but then you come to all the artificial satellites uh, of different types. You know, you get and, and it, you know they, they can range in size from very small what they call cube sats, really just a few centimeters squared, up to uh, much larger objects. Uh, and they can be things like telescopes. This is the Hubble Space Telescope, which is several meters long, and even the International Space Station. It's orbiting the Earth, so it's a it's a satellite, and that's about 100 meters long. So there's a huge range of different types of satellites you can have. So again, some more some more um, questions or some more ideas from you. What? So now we're talking about artificial satellites. What do we use them for? Why do we have artificial satellites? Can anyone give me any of the uses of artificial satellites? So again, you can either put it in the chat uh, or you can raise your hand. Um, I think two people raised up their hand, um, but let me check from the chat. So Zion Glory says communication and tracking. Good, good. Yes, thank you. So do you want, who, who is, I can't see from here who's raised the hand. So do you want um, to? Yes, it, it came briefly and it's gone short. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so Anita says for communication. Um, okay, yeah, I think I've seen it. Um, so Zion Glory um, has the hand up. So maybe you can unmute and go on. And then after that, I think Davis also has his hand up. So Zion Glory, do you want to go on? Do you want to unmute and ask your question? Yes, for, for detecting asteroids and planetary bodies that are out of sight. For human technologies. Thank okay, you. Great. Yes. Thank yes. You. So, Davis, you can go on too. And yes. then I'll take a couple of them from the chat. So, sorry, I couldn't hear that. Davis, could you just repeat that, please? It is used for communication and navigation. Okay, great. Yes. Thank you. Communication and okay. navigation. Thank you. So, Solomon, quickly, you say there's um, more in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, so quickly, Anita says communication. Bennett says to capture image from far. Daniel says for research. Jemima says for GPS tracking. Um, URL says helps to access data. Zion Glory again detecting asteroid and planetary bodies. And then um, Kumar says navigation, remote sensing, and communication. So, guys, thank you so, so much Fantastic. for these. Yes, comments. great. Very good comment. So, yes, I think you've, you've, you've got. Uh, a lot of the lot of the uses there. Obviously, um, communication, mobile phone communication is the one we we are probably most familiar with. Um, uh, but also television signals. Again, probably seen those uh, dishes, satellite dishes outside people's <laughs> buildings. Uh, and then also, G I think it was mentioned GPS tracking, whether in your in your car or just as you're walking around. Uh, weather forecasting, um, you know, they use a lot now for weather forecasting. You get these amazing, sometimes quite frightening images of big storms that are coming and they can track where the storms are going and then warn people. Um, internet, internet services can go through uh, uh, via satellites. Um, and then earth observation, and this is a, a huge um, area. Uh, in fact, it's quite incredible what they can do with earth observation. So it's not just taking pictures, but also monitoring um, and, and detect, you can have different sensors that can maybe detect things like you know, the temperature of the ocean, the salinity of the ocean. And I mean, really satellites are 
giving us so much important information to do with climate change. Uh, I mean, we, we really wouldn't know as much as we do about climate change without um, satellites. This particular image is from Ghana and it's actually showing mining. So that's something, an area that the government here is very interested in. There's a lot of illegal mining, we call it Galamse, um, and they're really trying to crack down on it um, because it, it can be very damaging to the environment. So, so that's something we want to use satellites for here amongst many other any other uses and of course the, the scientific research and astronomical research looking out into the universe and and learning more about our universe so uh, so really a whole host of uses which cover so many different aspects of our lives that really these days for the vast majority of people you know we use satellites every day in our everyday life and if we didn't have them it would you know it really would impact greatly on us so they're they're very important uh, now just an interesting question so do you know any idea approximately how many artificial satellites are currently orbiting the Earth? So I'll give you four choices, uh, 800, 2,800, 8,000 or 28,000. So maybe you can just put in the chat whether you think it's A, B, C or D. So A is 800, B is 2,800, C is 8,000 and D is 28,000. Okay, so we have a few already. Um, so Zion Glory says 800, 800. Kuma says um, 2,800. Um, Nell says D, which is 28,000, sorry. Um, David says B, which is um, 2,800. Um, Bennett also says B, always does the, B always does the magic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Interesting, okay. Anita so also says B. Okay. okay. Uh, so yeah, there's twenty eight thousand. Sorry, Sarah. No, no, no. <laughs> I was going to say it's, it's quite. If you if you try and Google it, you actually get all sorts of different answers. But there is a um, a website from uh, UNUSA, the United Nations Office for Outer Space Affairs, and they have got an official uh, list of everything that has gone into space. Um, but you can then you can filter it by ones that are orbiting Earth and things like that. So the correct answer is. Dun, 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 C, 8,000, it's something over 8,000. So currently there are something over 8,000 artificial satellites orbiting the earth. But out of that 8,000, only about 4,000 are active. You know, about half of them are, are, are not in use anymore, but they're, but they're still orbiting. So there's a lot up there. And um, the number of satellites uh, is increasing all the time. So the first ever satellite was Sputnik 1, launched in 1957. And since then, you can see how the, the, the launch numbers went up, you know, as the decades went by from 5, 39, 56, up to the 90s in, in the year 2000. Then in 2010, actually more or less the same number, but then it really starts to increase. In 2015, 154. This is the number of launches. 2018, 400 launches. In 2020, one over 1,000 launches. And 2021, over 1,700 launches. So it just shows how much we're using satellites now. We want more and more satellites to be doing more and more for us. So it really is a, a hugely expanding area. Uh, and they have different orbits. Uh, because you might be thinking, wow, you know, they're all whizzing around there. So they're actually in, in different orbits. You have the low Earth orbit, um, and that's where things like the International Space Station is and, and some of the other uh, weather satellites and Earth observation. Uh, medium orbit, as I said, they're from 1,000 to about 25,000 kilometres. Um, and then geostationary orbit. This is a very interesting um, feature. Uh, so um, satellites that are in geostationary orbit actually take the same time to orbit the Earth as the Earth does to spin on its axis. Um, so at any point on the Earth, the satellite will look as though it's kind of fixed above you. Okay? Um, and so that's obviously very important for tele telecommunications and TV broadcasting and so on, because obviously if you want to get your favorite television programs on DSTV, you want your satellite dish to always be pointing at the satellite, you know, if the satellite has moved out of view, then you're not going to get your television program. So that's like a very special orbit geostationary. Um, and then you can even have ones higher than that, the high Earth orbit. So now, so you can see this huge range of 
different uh, things that these satellites can do, uh, providing us with all this important information. And so you might think, well, wow, these satellites, they're, they're up in space, they're doing all these incredible things. It must be really complicated and high tech and so on. And yes, they are. They are, you know, of course, you know, very um, sophisticated um, pieces of equipment and, and they're expensive and it's expensive to get them into space. But that, you know, everything starts from somewhere. Um, so we're looking at now how can we, how can ordinary people build your own satellite? Of course, it won't be exactly the same as those ones far up in space, but the basic idea is something incredibly that we can all learn, which I think is really fascinating. So that's what our two guests are going to be telling us about today. So Solomon and Eric, so it's uh, really great that they're both here. So we'll start off with you, Solomon, can we, if you'd like to uh, start off. Right. Oh, let me stop thank sharing. you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for that nice introduction. Um, I'll just go straight ahead um, and start. Okay, so I believe people can see my screen. Yes, yes. Okay, great. Um, yeah, so um, I would, yeah, I, I can just go on and start now. All right, so um, Sarah has mentioned um, a lot about satellites and um, why they are important, and I think people even um, told us why these are important. So what I'll be talking about is um, one of these projects, um, which um, have been, um, or has already started actually in Ghana, uh, which is actually led by um, Xavier Space Solution, which is the space startup I mentioned earlier on. So um, I'll talk a little bit about myself um, shortly, and then we can move on to that. So um, like I said, yeah, I'm, I'm Solomon. Um, I love in everything space science. So if, if it has to be space, I'm in there, okay? So um, yeah, that's just a little bit about myself, apart from we talking about all this stuff. Um, I currently am a research student um, at the University of Leeds. And then I'll mention shortly, I mean, something that um, I actually, or what I happen to do um, there. So I study young massive stars. Um, so if you don't know, um, you have different, different types of stars, not just the colors. Some stars appear to be white in the sky, some red, some blue, and all these things mean a lot, okay? Um, and what I happen to do is I study um, young massive stars, which you can't really ca characterize in general by um, just these colors or these things, but um, young massive stars are um, generally stars that have masses uh, more than um, eight solar masses, which means they are usually eight times more massive than our own sun. And that's what I studied. Now, the reason why it's important for us to do these studies is because um, it's only when these young massive stars die, that is when they um, release or produce heavy elements such as carbon, nitrogen, which we know uh, make stuff like ourselves or human beings. So that's why they are important for us to study. So that's just a little bit about what I'm studying at the moment. So apart from that, um, I also work closely with X-Space Solution on the um, Ghana Cancer Rocketry Championship. So um, in general, this is just a championship where we teach students how to build, <clears throat> sorry, uh, miniature satellites. And um, I would kind of give you the background information on how it started, um, who was involved and how uh, it's going at the moment. So, um, like I said, um, the Ghana Cancer Rocketry Championship um, is a championship where students learn how to build miniature satellites. And if I mean miniature satellite, I mean these are experimental satellites. So these are not satellites that go to space, but they go to um, a specific altitude, um, usually between um, um, 10 to about 600 meters, um, depending on what competition and they perform basic um, experiments like being able to measure the atmospheric um, pollution um, among some other stuff. So this competition was set up by the Committee for Space Development Program um, in Serbia together with the World um, Cancer Worker Trade Championship. Um, at the end of my, my talk, I'll show you a few of the um, partners or companies who have help this um, to um, actually happen. So the GCRC team is not just a few individuals, so there are lots of people who have helped to do this. So we have Jake, uh, who is the organizer. We have Bilal, who is um, an advisor. Um, we have Kingsley also, who is um, a promoter. And we do have Banabas Nomo also. Um, so um, yeah, there are a few of the guys here. And um, this just lets you know that uh, 
And this is, we have a strong team and um, I, I would tell you that these are people who are working very, very hard. I work with all these people and it's um, very, very great for us to um, have to work together. So in, in, in some sense, I would say that if the team is here and thank you guys so much for uh, making this happen. So um, this is a picture also of some of the team members. Um, so we have, apart from the GCRC team itself, we have people that we call POCs who are the points of contact um, in different, different universities in Ghana because the competition is run at the moment um, at the tertiary level. So we have people there that help to coordinate the activities. So we have Daniel Asante from the Regional Maritime University, um, Solomon Dodu at the University of Ghana, Alberta and Jemima also at KNESD. You can see them in this picture here. So that's Alberta and that's Jemima. Then that's also Sarah. We also have, uh, Sarah is not a POC, but she is here. Um, so we also have Sam, Sam and then Elvis at the Akrata Technical University. Um, we also do have um, Joshua Kumi at the um, Koforidia Technical University. Um, and um, finally, um, we also have Andrela at the Academic City University um, College also. So um, yeah, um, apart from that also, we do have some people um, who serve as advice, advisors in general. Um, so these are usually um, researchers or lecturers at different universities. So we have Mr. Jinian Bennett at Academic City, who is also an advisor for the competition. We have Dr. Nana Mark Luce also at the University of Ghana, formerly um, also at the Ghana Space Science and Technology um, Institute. So um, in general, you can ask, what is the plan um, for GCRC or how did we, um, I mean, go on to start having to kick off the event and then finally going on to what we are going to do. So first of all, we had a lunch, which I'll show you some pictures shortly. And uh, from the lunch, we ran a few training and workshops and also um, some what we call mini contests, which are kind of embedded in um, the workshop. An example is um, student being able to build a 3D version of the uh, satellite before they actually design it. And this is all part of um, our capacity building process. And in the end, we will have people, um, or we would organize the national um, campaign, which I'll show you the, I'll, I'll um, share with you the dates um, for this shortly. And um, in the end, also the world championship, which is going to happen in Serbia. And that's um, kind of, um, will be the climax of the event. Of course, we have some post campaign events, which also students will be involved in. So in general, what is the concert mission? Or once students are able to build these experimental sets, like what is this supposed to do? So um, I've put a few of the guidelines on what the mission should be or what the mission actually the students are building would be about. So um, the first one will be on, um, they'll first of all have to learn this um, concert or experimental satellite to a minimum height of about 50 meters above the ground. Um, and um, it falls back with a parachute, of course, um, and um, they would uh, measure or they would use this together with their payload to be able to measure or take parameters for their science goal. So um, yeah, they will take stuff like temperature measurements, um, send the data to a transmitter, I mean, through a transmitter to a ground station and then analyze the data. So this is just the general uh, mission guidelines. So um, Sarah has already mentioned a few things of what a satellite is, but to be specific, what is a concert? So it's usually um, called an experimental satellite or a very small satellite, and it's usually fit in a soda can. So if you think of your, um, any of the solar, uh, sorry, the um, soda um, drinks you take, whether can cokes or whatever you, you do take. So that size, that's the size that this, all the component of the satellite should be able to fit in there. And um, the reason why this is the case is, um, this is a more affordable way, uh, affordable way to conduct an actual research, an actual space mission, because it follows through all the various processes required for an actual space mission. Um, so this is a very fun and then um, interactive way of student learning how to um, build your own um, payload, um, think about the electronics and all those things to be able to start it. Now, what makes it unique to um, actually join um, such a campaign is because you don't need to be um, say a science student in general or know anything about electronics or anything to actually take part in this competition. That's how, um, is it versatile I should say, but that's how we have made it because um, people who join the campaign will get training on a few things like electronics, um, 
what is even electronics in general, how can they get this done and all those things. And we have done a few of these things, which I'll share with you uh, um, on our YouTube page. You can go there and check a few of these things. So um, hopefully you have an idea of what um, a concept is there. So at the moment, or oh, I mean, when we did start, we had about 80 plus applications from more than 80 universities in Ghana. Um, at the moment, we have um, 13 teams, um, eight teams from KNEST, two teams from Academic City, two teams also from the Accra Technical University and one team from the Regional Maritime University. And um, usually these teams um, consist of three members. Now it can be two students and then um, one lecturer or um, a mentor in there. So it doesn't have to be all students, but uh, however variety you put it in there is um, still fine. Um, so this is just to give you a, a few background. So um, we did the lunch um, in July, 2021, which was last year at the Academic City University College. Um, and um, these are a few pictures of how the event went. Um, and um, you can see our um, team there. You can see we had actually an exhibition where we had models where people took pictures um, around. Um, and I think this is one of our participants. Fate, we have um, Alberta. Um, and this is Daniel here. So he won an award for one of the mini contests that we run. And <clears throat> you can see that. Um, that there. And you can also see uh, Mr. Ferdinand, who is also part of the TCRC team, uh, leading the exhibition um, right in these images. So um, the main, one of the other mini contests we organized was, um, <clears throat> sorry, um, one where um, participants will build their 3D version of their concept, which you can see here. So this is one of the designs that people did make. And again, this was something that we taught students how to use um, um, how to use a 3D software. Um, I think it's, it's Tinkercad. And um, from this, they were able to design before they actually go on to build. Then um, also in December, we had a workshop in electronics, which Eric, um, who is here to talk about um, um, the, I mean, the campaign again here uh, would also, I mean, actually led this workshop. And these are all videos we have on our YouTube page. So you can actually visit and um, take a look. Um, so fast forward um, this year, um, I think next year, I uh, said so next year, next month, we actually be having uh, a hands-on workshop where participants will get to play with um, the actual or a model that we have, a model, a concept model that we have designed um, for. So just again, like I said, giving them that training to be able to know what their model should look like, um, how they can um, understand what should be where, how she should work. And this is something Prof will say more about um, shortly. So all the participants should look forward to this um, coming up in April. So from that, we have the national campaign, which will be the 13 teams that we have face off um, each other. Um, and we are hoping this will happen in June. And from there, we can select the, uh, the winning teams. Uh, I think we will have three winning teams. And these three winning teams already have um, a sponsorship package from one of our sponsors to actually um, learn um, something about space science and, um, and stuff like that, which I think I'll mention um, um, shortly. So um, the plan was that after the national campaign, we will do have a continental campaign. So it will mean different, different um, teams from Africa will face off. And from there, we will have people um, picked who would um, then take part in the world championship. However, this year we are not having um, the continental championship um, because of COVID. Um, so um, we are just going to go straight into the World Championship, which is going to happen um, in September, I think from the 23rd to 26th um, September. And um, we will have teams. So the, Ghan the Ghanaian um, winning teams among those other winning teams from different parts of the world will all go to Serbia and um, showcase their, can um, their concerts, um, have to send it um, into um, to a specific altitude and from there the winning teams would be decided so um, these are a few of our sponsors so we have um, so at the moment um, we have all these we just had the KNST University Center happen to also um, agree to um, partner with us on this uh, we have electronics we have academic city who have um, given us a package we have um, the geek space who um, do stuff together with our website and stuff like that we have the space generation advisory council um, the World Cancer Advocacy Championship. Um, and of course, uh, we do have the uh, Mass Moon Aeronautics um, Academy and um, Research Center. And they are the 
um, people behind the scholarship and giving to the winning teams at the end of the competition. So um, I should say uh, thank you to everybody who has actually supported this. Um, if you are free and you still want to, um, I mean, if you want to support what we are doing, um, you can send us an email at Cancer Ghana or get in touch with me. Um, so it's Cancer Ghana at, um, I mean, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube, you can find us there and uh, find more information. So um, I think I do have a video, but I'm not going to um, have to share that yet. But um, Solomon, at can this I, point, Sorry, can I, someone ask what the, the T, you know, in your sponsors, there was TSC in the bottom right corner. Who, who were the TSC? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so the TSC is also a company in um, India. Um, they also oh. do produce, um, 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 they, they also produce these um, constant models um, and they are also um, one of our partners, yeah. So, sorry I didn't mention. And this is in uh, Russian language, but this is the Center for Space Development Program and, and they also um, support us, um, yeah. So thank you guys, thank you so much. I hope I gave you an overall overview of how the campaign went and uh, how some of the things we are still doing and what participants should look for. If you have any questions, I think you can put in the chat um, I'll stop talking now, so Prof will give you more um, information on the concert or the, um, I mean, some other details. So thank you so much. Actually, again, can I just briefly say something? Because again, there's quite a few messages in chat from uh, Kobana, especially from Tech Farm Hub. But just so if if you're interested in, you know, taking part or, you know, finding out more detail, then I think probably best if, uh, you know, Solomon, I'm sure you and your team can contact them afterwards because, uh, you know, I mean, there's, it's, it's great. There's a lot of discussion to have. So it's better if that's maybe after the session. So, but yeah. it's yes, wonderful to hear all the interest. So thank you. And sorry, yeah, so over to Eric. Yeah. Um, Eric, are you there? No. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Yeah. Hello. It's always a great delight to meet with you. Ignore my beard. I'm on a sabbatical leave for shaving. <laughs> All right. So it was actually interesting to be uh, given the opportunity to speak on um, this particular program and also to showcase a baby girl that uh, we've given birth to. So uh, if you are with me, yeah, I think we are going to have a very great section very soon. <laughs> but I just want to share a few things, uh, some of the things that led to the need for uh, what we have designed and the things that are coming up. And I hope it inspires somebody to do more when it comes to electronics. All right. So, um, so can I share my... You're good to go. Okay. Okay. All right, so um, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Eric Obin, but you can always call me professor. Come check my, you can get, check me on my website, ericobain.com or my social media pages. Okay, so I'll be talking to you about uh, the custom GCRC microcontrollers that we have designed, also known as Nyakwa. Uh, for those who understand she, yeah. Okay, so why do we need to design this? Okay, the need for a cancer model. So if you look online for things that people have been designing for cancer, uh, in, in this picture, you can see some of the works that other people have done. And then one thing I realize is if you look at the main specifications for designing a concert, there is so much uh, constraint, which actually kind of impedes fanciness of design. However, we still have to design something interesting and nice. Okay, so the most of the, the most important or crucial of all this constraint is uh, has to do with space constraint. I mean, you, you have to design a whole thing into a can. If you even look at your battery, I mean, your power sources alone, that, that takes enough, enough space. So just imagine putting a whole system that is going to perform telemetry, communicate with ground-based system into a little can, okay? So uh, that is why we, we 
we came up with this idea. And so designing a cancer that actually requires a high density component assembly. If you look at what somebody has done, you can see that this, if something goes wrong and you have to tear everything up and fix it, that's going to be so much work, okay? So one of the challenges that I've seen, if you look at what we have here, they are practically assembling modules. So all these are electronic modules that they bought and they assembled. But one of the problems is that these modules occupy spaces that we don't control, okay? For instance, if you are trying to fix an Arduino into your cancer, you can't squeeze it smaller. You just have to go by the space it occupies, okay? And then um, most people will probably be using these other modules like RTCs. All these occupy a lot of space that in the end, you may end up not being able to uh, manage the space in the can well, okay? So we came up with the custom concept. Now it's of two parts. We have the communication controller now, the communication controller has a LoRa module that is capable of doing 10 kilometer distance communication. So if you even look compared to the 50 meters Solomon was talking about, I mean, you can actually communicate enough. 10 kilometers is quite a, a, a longer distance, okay? So even if you go five kilometers, your, your signal will be so strong to have a retained journey. Okay, so that is one of the features of our custom module. Then it has a GNSS tracker. Now, most of you are aware of GPS tracker. Now, GNSS, uh, the satellites for uh, GPS communication, we call it a constellation. And GPS happens to be just one of those constellations. Okay, so the right way of referring to them is GNSS. Uh, global navigation system, something, something. Okay, so out of this, GPS is from US, GLONASS is from Russia, Beidou is from China, and Galileo is for Europe, okay? Now, then on board, the, the, GNS, the GNSS tracker we are using is able to receive signal from all these, uh, all these satellites. That means that we have better or pinpoint location capabilities, okay? We, we are not talking about like 1.5 meter resolution or error accuracy. We are very fine or refined accuracy. If you are getting signals from these guys, then you can resolve your distances to a higher degree of accuracy. Then we also have an inbuilt altimeter, something to tell you the height your satellite has reached. And it also happens to be a barometric pressure sensor. Actually, uh, the physics behind it is the fact that pressure decreases or changes with height. So you measure the pressure and use it to estimate your height. So every altimeter is also by default a barometric pressure sensor. We have it on the communication board. We also have an accelerometer, gyroscope, and magnetometer. Now, the accelerometer can tell you the speed at which the satellite is moving. The gyroscope can tell you about its tilt angle, and you can actually use the magnetometer to implement compass. So you can do so much things with, with this module, okay? With just this, in fact, so much. And I'm just waiting for the kind of innovative designs that people will come up with this baby girl. All right, now the next thing is that it's powered by um, um, uh, sorry, an ESP32 microcontroller. 16 megabytes RAM. So you have the chance to do every fancy programming that you want. We also have a high precision real time clock. So this will help you to timestamp your data. So as your recordings are coming in, you can associate them with time. You can, so you can pr practically launch your satellite and give it time. So start at this time, stop at this time, return to ground base, all these features are uh, in there. Then I have also equipped it with a um, system bit resolution ADC. Now, if you take a normal Arduino, a normal Arduino can give you data up to like two decimal places, but there are certain measurements that when you do, you need data in microvolts or the, uh, the micro micron zone. Okay, so this system bit precision micro uh, ADC is capable of giving you know, up to about six decimal places which means that you can measure things to a better accuracy and precision. 
then I think finally you can use it for either the concert or can use it to set up a, a base station. So that means you don't have to worry about different hardware for your base station. You can use the same device for a base station or as your cancer. Okay. Then the second part is the payload controller where you interface your system. So take it as your a custom Arduino board, right? Just that this is not an Arduino board. This is, um, is yeah. So uh, basically, this is the point where you would interface any other thing that you will build. The sensors that you want to attach your custom circuitry, parachute ejectors, you are going to interface it with this particular module. Now, this one also has some basic features. You have a programmable micro USB interface, so you can hook it directly to your PC and program it without the need for any uh, wahala. Then it is actually compatible with a version of Arduino called the uh, Arduino Leonardo. So when you want to program it with Arduino, you just have to pull, uh, set the board to Arduino Leonardo and it's pin compatible with that. It uses a microcontroller called Atmega 32U4, which has some advantages over the one on Arduino Uno. You can also power it directly with a 6 volt battery uh, because uh, actually this is a very crucial thing and it's one of the things that I'll be writing a lot of documentations on because uh, the, there is a lot of power constraints and so you have to be very efficient in your energy consumption. So this is something very crucial and I hope, I'm hoping that when we have the physical meetup, I can explain these things in documentation and also in person. All right, so there are also uh, three voltage regulators, five volt and three volt. So it also gives you the ability to hook it up to a nine volt or 12 volt power supply, if that is what you have or connect it directly with a six volt or a five volt power supply. Then you can actually access the previous module, which is the communication controller via this uh, uh, payload module. So that one is for an advanced use. If you want to override the custom firmware on the payload, uh, the, the communication module, yes, you are allowed and you can actually con communicate with the payload directly using some pins on this interface. Okay, so one best thing or best aspect of it is it is designed to fit in the coke. In fact, I made sure it takes just about a one third of the coke can so that you have the rest of the two thirds to integrate whatever devices that you want, giving you the power and the flexibility of uh, doing more. Okay, so what are some of the things that you would, some of the benefit that you can derive from doing these things, learning how to build cancer and all that. Now, if you've met me in one of our trainings, you can see how passionate I am when it comes to teaching electronics and programming. One of the things I enjoy from this is creative thinking. Okay, every day I get opportunity of solving different problems because customers come to me with different problems and most of the time I have to think about how to solve those problems. So uh, in respect, I can say that every day I gym that aspect of my brain. So actually thinking through stuff is one of my skills. If thinking can become a skill, then that has become one of my skills. And it's one of the things that made me really appreciate doing electronics and programming. Okay, so creative thinking is a skill you can develop. Then, of course, you'll be programming your system. Definitely, you will learn a programming language. You'd learn C if nothing at all. And right now, IoT is a thing. So even if you can program just Arduino, you still have a, a job, a job space to occupy. Then you can also become an electronic system designer, which is also a fetching and a more profitable job in these days and the years to come. In fact, right now, there are two jobs that everybody should learn how to, programming and electronics, because the world is becoming digital and these are the platforms for the digital world. So if I were you, I would hook up. Okay, so job opportunities. You can be as an electronic system designer, software developer, IoT systems designer. And apart from the above all, you would be saved from the unemployment crisis. You see, 
uh, right now, yes, mostly we are battling with unemployment, but in five years time, it's going to be very dangerous because it's going to change phase from unemployment to unemployability. Now, unemployment means we have skilled labor, but they don't have jobs, right? But unemployability means there is job, but we don't have the skill to meet that job. In that case, both workers and businesses are going to suffer because no matter how much you want to offer, there is nobody to do that job for you. So this is a pending danger in the future, which I would say that everybody should pay attention to whatever business you are doing, try to integrate IT to it, try find any, in fact, even if you are selling pure water, find a way to do it with IT, okay? We always delegate mundane and repetitive stuff to the computer so you can get enough time for your family, your friends, pay attention to your social life. All this, I'm going to work, we are working like horses, it needs to stop. And you have the computer at your disposal, automated to do the things that you want, no hassle. Okay, so thank you. But before I leave, I want to show you the 3D model of, um, the, the project. So I'm first going to show you the, the, the communication side. Okay, so this is the PCB design, those who know how to, those who understand what PCB design is. So inside that board are these electrical connections. It's amazing, huh? Okay, so <laughs> let me bring the 3D model out and uh, Loading. Okay. All right. So this is the communication module. Okay. So you can see that we have two antennas. One is for the LoRa. One is for the GNSS or the GPS tracking. Okay. Then we have all these ISIS. Now these are things that if you were going to use modules directly, would probably occupy the cook can already, right? But by creating this custom solution, we have this on just a 6 mm diameter board. Very, very simple. And beneath it, we have our RTC backup battery. We have our ESP microcontroller and all the systems that needs for this thing to work. So actually, even if you don't have any payload, you can just send this to, to into the atmosphere to measure some stuff and bring it back. Okay. All right. So that is the that is the communication model. And let me quickly show the payload. Okay. Okay, so this is also the motherboard for the payload. Okay, you can see that it is also not very friendly. <laughs> okay, so those who appreciate PCB design, you know what is going on. They can see that there is a lot of magic going on. Okay, so let me quickly share the 3D module for this one. And yeah, so that is the payload. All these interfaces here helps you connect to the previous one that I showed, which is the communication controller, your USB module to connect to your PC. And this is where you, the designer, you would be interfacing your systems. Okay, so uh, you'll have your Arduino, normal Arduino analog pins all here, right? Then you have your extra system bit pins. So if you want to do a very fine measurement, you have you can do that here. And all the other ports are places that you can in, uh, helps you to interface with your microcontroller. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is our daughter, and we hope to outdoor it soon. Thank you. Thank you so much, bro. Thank you so much. Um, so how are you doing with time? Um, so that we can quickly go on to the questions and uh, probably, uh, yeah. Well, uh, we're not doing very well for time because we're, we're almost out, but it's, I mean, we, it's, both of you gave really fascinating presentations, really. I mean, I already knew about the 
the competition, but I've learned so much more just from listening to the two of you. So, and there've been a lot of questions. So I think, I mean, obviously if somebody has something to do and they need to go, uh, of course, you know, we, we can't keep you, but I, I think it would be great if we could continue for another, you know, maybe 15 minutes or so to get some yeah. more questions, um, yeah. if, if that's fine with you. Yeah, I think people join late, so yeah, pardon us. <laughs> okay, so um, let me quickly go to the questions and then we can move on to the next um, section. Um, so I think, um, let me see if I have the very first question. Yeah, so the first question was from Zion Glory. So um, the question was, um, this materials are miniature, right? So I think it's when, Prof, you showed your the custom boards. So the component there, I think maybe you can give an idea of the size of it. Um, I know it can fit into the soda can, okay? Um, but yeah, so that's in terms of the dimension. So if you're asking about how miniature it can get, then Sion Glory, um, that's it. I hope that clarifies it. Okay, I'm hoping it does. Um, so Faith says, um, so Faith asks a question about whether every team is going to get the custom board for free, um, and also if we can get the documentation for Nyakua. So I think um, I'll answer the first part and Prof will go on to the documentation. So the idea is that these custom boards are stuff that you guys are going to play with. So during the workshop that we are going to have in Kumase, um, each team that is going to be there is going to have these custom boards and play with them. Um, in terms of um, whether you're going to get it for free for your own use, um, I think we are still discussing um, how um, that's going to go on because these are things that um, we, we, we had to develop from scratch. Uh, which means there are a few costs that have to come with it. But we are still working on um, what is the best thing to do. So um, Faith, um, I think soon um, we will be able to do that. Um, I think I may have missed one question. Um, yeah, but Prof, maybe do the documentation part and I can go back to that. Okay, so the, the plan is to have a documentation site, okay, and an interactive uh, HTML page that would, uh, just like we have for the Arduino, Arduino documentation, yeah, we're going to design something like that and get uh, some technical people to write and edit. Then we also have a session for people to share their codes and things that they are doing with, with, with the platform, yeah. So there is going to be that kind of thing. All right, thank you so much. Um, I think um, this question was asked from Kwabena. Um, so you were asking if the competition was still open and if we can get people to still join. So um, yes, the competition is open. So this is the last opportunity. If you want to join the competition, I think I'm going to find a link shortly and put in there. If you want to join, this is the last point that you can join. After the hands-on workshop you're going to have in Kumasi, no other team will be able to join because we have done a lot of workshops and all those things. And if you have missed all of them, more importantly, the hands-on, it's, I don't think it will be impossible. You would have to wait for next year. And talking about next year, at the moment, the competition is only for uh, tertiary level. From next year, we are hoping to um, have this at the elementary level so that high school um, students, among others, can also take part. So if you are young and you still want to do this, um, just sit tight and you, have, um, you will be able to join, um, I think, next year for the elementary which also would have the tertiary also. So thank you. Um, there was also a question about, um, let me see. Yeah, so what software are you using? I think it's when you showed the 3D version of the design. Yeah, so. So that's KitKat. I mean, I KitKat. KitKat. Yeah, yeah, I think, um, yeah, Manuel Fusu mentioned that too. So thank you. Uh, let's see. So uh, this is a direct mes message to me. So <laughs> okay, I'll just go on. Um, so, Jiwaji says we would like to be able to purchase them for use in Tanzania. So um, this is definitely something we are happy to hear because um, at, the, at the moment, what we wanted to do is to build a model that students can play with and use. And we have already had a lot of, um, have a lot of requests from other countries um, who are interested in purchasing them for um, this experimental training and all that. So um, Jiwaji, um, I think you can send me um, an email um, I mean, you can send me a text here as a private message and um, I would send you my email and we can get to talk about how to do that. Thank you so much um, for that too. Uh, let me see. Um, yeah, so Samuel says, exposing these gadgets to the environment, how long would it last? Can it withstand harsh conditions um, like rain, et cetera? So um, I'll slightly answer this and I think Prof can also pick from that. So um, Samuel, so the thing is, these are experimental satellites 
um, they go to space. I think for the whole competition, it goes to space. Um, I say space. If I mean space, it goes to a specific altitude. Um, and um, it should fall back within no more than 40 minutes. It shouldn't take that long there. I think it should even be less, like 15 minutes or so, and fall back, and you're going to um, take your data. So it's not going to stay in space. So um, the, I mean, exposing these things to harsh conditions don't really come in here. But I think for rain and all that, Prof would um, be best to answer. So Prof, uh, yeah. I think you're muted. You all right, there. thank you. Uh, so I think the whole idea of designing this was to reduce the workload. Okay, we wanted to do much, not most, right? So some of these things as in securing your assets is something for the designer to come up with creative ways of doing it. We don't want to take all the fun from you. So we are just giving you an assist, then you do the rest. So protecting it and all that, that's up to the designers, yeah. All right, so thank you so much. Um, let me see um, if there's anything else here. Yeah, I think that should be all for the questions. Um, I think we don't another, have a lot. Okay, there's, there's another, another one, yeah. Yeah, from Neil. How, how are these vehicles carrying the satellites propelled? Yes, so good, good question. So we have the option of actually, if you build these miniature satellites, you have the option to use a balloon to launch it. You can even use a drone. And the most popular one is to be able to use a rocket to actually um, send your concert to that altitude and the force back to do stuff. However, for the Ghanaian competition, we are going to stick with balloons because they are much easier to do. Um, however, during the world championship, we are going to use a rocket. It doesn't change anything really. You just have to build your concert model with your payload and everything. They are going to, during the world championship, they are going to provide a rocket for you. So you just set um, the concert on your rocket. You don't, no design changes will be involved really. You just put it on the rocket and it that's just send this to um, the altitude and then you can fall back and those stuff. So it's not really uh, so much of a different in terms of design. So um, thank you so much for your question. Um, yes, I think, uh, Sarah, I guess that's all right. Um, yeah, the rest are just direct messages. So uh, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you so much uh, for this. Uh, yeah, all right. Okay, so let's move quickly move on to the next part and then I think we can end it. So again, if you want to leave, please, you can go on and leave. Yeah. So yeah, Sarah. Okay, so th thank you. As I said, I think that's been a really fascinating couple of talks. Um, so the next little bit is just a section that we always have. So it's kind of going back to the astronomy now. We just want to talk about what you can see in the night sky because we, we really like to encourage everyone to think about the night sky, look up. It's amazing what people don't realize that they can see. So I'll just, uh, just let me share my screen. Let me just make sure I'm in the right place. Yes, okay. Okay, good. So can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay, so what's in the night sky? And actually I've changed that to say morning sky because at the moment, most of the interesting objects and planets are only visible in the morning. So I hope everyone is an early riser. <laughs> Otherwise you'll miss out. I'm not. So, <laughs> I know I'm not always very good either. Okay, so, so, so dawn tomorrow, if you like, um, you've got Mars, Venus, so three planets. So not just one, not two, but three planets all in a nice group um, in the Eastern sky just before dawn. Uh, and then, uh, so if, in case you don't know, Venus is uh, very bright, uh, Saturn is, won't be quite as bright, and Mars definitely actually does have a reddish tinge, so it's, it's normally quite easy to tell them apart. And I said, this is with your naked eye, you don't need binoculars, telescope or anything. Um, and then if you have a good view of the horizon, you may just be able to spot Jupiter very low down there on the horizon, and also the moon will be up above, so that's... Uh, uh, like dawn tomorrow if you like um so yeah so that's like the, the 27th and then the next day see the moon will have changed its positions so then you've got a really nice grouping there of mars venus saturn and the moon together so if anyone is a keen astrophotographer i know jiwaji you often take some really nice pictures from dar es salaam there's a nice opportunity to get some good photos there 
And so really throughout the whole month, in fact, most of the year, until a bit later in the year, everything is in the morning. So um, on the 5th of April in the morning, uh, the, the planets will be kind of moving in their uh, positions and Saturn and Mars will be incredibly close. It's what we call a conjunction. Um, now, this is, if you like, an optical illusion. Of course, Saturn and Mars haven't collided. But it, from our viewpoint on Earth, they look extremely close in the night sky. So that's on the, 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 the 5th of April. And of course, just before and just after, they'll also be very close. Um, and then later in the month, like the 24th to the 27th, um, it's great. You'll, you'll see that all the uh, planets stretched out here in a line. Uh, Jupiter at the bottom, then Venus, Mars and Saturn. And they'll be easy to spot them because the moon will kind of move through them. So on the 24th, the moon is at the top. Uh, the 25th, also I think I'm cutting a bit off there, it will be beneath uh, Saturn, 26th between Mars and Venus, and 27th be close to Venus and Jupiter, so that will uh, be a good way to spot them. Uh, oh, okay, I think that's it, yes, yeah, so. <laughs> oh, and I, oh, actually one thing I did want to mention before, when we were talking about satellites, um, you can also, sometimes you can see the satellites. Um, there are various uh, websites you can go to. There's one called Heavens Above, and there's another one called Spot the Station, which is just for the International Space Station. It'll tell you, you know, the day, the time, the direction when you can see a particular satellite. If you're in something like Accra, where we have a lot of lights, a lot of light pollution, you, you may not see any of them apart from the International Space Station, which is the biggest and the brightest. But if you live somewhere away from city lights, you, there may be quite a few that you can see. Uh, and again, with a naked eye, you'll just see like a moving dot. So that's actually quite exciting. So do look that up. You can Google, you know, how to see uh, satellites. Okay, and now back to Solomon. Any last announcements, Solomon? Yes, um, there is just um, a few. Um, but before we do that, I think it's nice if um, you can turn your camera on. We can do a group photo quickly oh, before yes, people yes, leave. Yes. Because um, we and I'll just yeah, and then I'll just finish off with the announcement. So you can turn your camera on, um, and anybody who can take a screenshot, please go on to do so. I usually struggle on how to do this. <laughs> so um, let me see. I think I can. Hello, this is Bennett. Oh yeah, hi Bennett. Uh, my okay, great. I've been listening to you guys. It's been a great session. I hope yeah, you do more you. of this. Yes, so we do this at the end of every month. Uh, it's just that the topics are different most of the time, but yeah. So yeah, I can see people. If you can turn your camera on, please do so. I would do a screenshot now. And nice to see you all. Okay, so smile. And other people can also take it. Whilst, um, like I said, I don't know how to do this. <laughs> but I'm trying, I think I've taken a few now. Let me take one more and uh, yeah, because the other people yes, on the other side. Um, yeah, the other people at the other side. So let me go to the we next can, screen. Yes, I can see other can people. Change the, uh, the orientation. Yeah, um, I think I got Professor, that too. Eric, you're hiding. <laughs> and, uh, Davis, um, you don't want us to see you. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think uh, yeah, I have a few now. So that's great. All right. So guys, thank you so much. Um, let me quickly go on to the, um, the announcement and then we can um, finish off. So whilst I'm trying to bring the screen up, um, I should say that the recording will be sent to everybody. Um, or so far as you registered, we will send you the link to our YouTube, YouTube page. If you want to revisit um, this um, section, you can always do so. And then our past sections. I believe people can see my screen now. Yes, yes. yes okay, yes. all right, great. Okay, so um, so next um, month um, we have um, a few interesting speakers, really. So we do have Dr. Nanama Kluche, um, who is a scientist at um, and also a lecturer at the Ghana, um, I mean the University of Ghana, Lagos, and um, we would have her to talk about I think climate change um, or something slightly related to her research. So you should be looking forward to that. And also we will have the very first female astronomer um, in Ghana. She has already. Um, joined one of our sections, but we, will, we are hoping to have her join again. This time, she'll be talking about the Ghana um, Radio Astronomy um, Observatory and um, some of the stuff that they do there. Um, I think going forward to, we will have uh, maybe an amateur um, astronomer or um, yeah, something like that, somebody to come and then talk about 
um, what it takes to be able to start your own um, astronomy, say research or activities or anything like that. Um, I should um, also add that if you are interested in hearing about a specific topic, maybe you're interested in black holes, aliens, you want us to talk about something like that, feel free to always send us an email um, and um, we would uh, get people to talk about this. So guys, thank you so much for joining. Um, I think can I, can I, I just, sorry, yes. sorry, can I just say a quick couple of things? So just to point out that uh, Dr. Sure. Naomi, yeah, she was the first um, uh, official female astronomer in Ghana. And also she's just recently been elected to be the vice president oh. of African Astronomical Society. Yes. So that's a good thing. And also Dr. Nana Amma, um, she, uh, she, yeah, she's a lecturer in the physics department at the University of Ghana, but she is actually a climate scientist and she actually is part of the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. So that's like the highest authority on climate change. She is part of that. So she really is an authority, but she's also very um, knowledgeable about astronomy. So yes, hopefully we'll see the link between astronomy and climate change because she's got like a foot in both camps. So that should, so those, those two talks really should be really interesting coming up in the next couple of months. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, so if anything else I missed, um, I think um, I will just say that Sarah, thank you so much for um, having to be here for us to um, always talk about these ex exciting things. And Prof, thank you so much for also um, not just um, having to um, work with us on the Ghana Cancer Workery Championship, um, but also for you um, having to be available to talk to our participants um, whenever we need you too. So um, I would thank say you. that thank you to all our partners um, and then um, everybody, also the GCRC team, I'm just going back to the slide just to um, put here. Yeah. So we have Salom, we have Jemima, Alberta, Eric Obin, uh, Ferdinand, um, Samuel Kwesi, Barnabas, Kingsley, um, Bilal, um, Jake, and, and everybody else on the team. And even Sarah, you don't, you're don't, you not officially here, but Sarah has helped us in the past lots of times. So thank you guys so much for having to um, be with us. And um, thank you guys, everybody from anywhere from joining our section today and yeah, we will see you in our next. Hello. Year. Hello, hello, hello. Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. And before before we go, I just want to say that thanks so much for this. And then please follow our social media pages <laughs> and keep the likes coming and share them. We we'll, we we'll really appreciate that too. Thank thanks so much. Yeah, so that's something I always forget and Salam happened to be the social media manager, so it's good for him to always mention. So when you leave a like and all those things, um, it actually help other people to find our channel and our Facebook, uh, I mean our various social media platforms. So that's something important you should do once you visit or see anything. So guys, thank you so much. If I can just quickly say, uh, Zion Glory had a quick question there. Are you in collaboration with Zooniverse? So the answer to that is we're not in any official collaboration with them, but we know of Zooniverse. If anyone else, if you haven't heard of it, uh, just you can just Google Zooniverse. It's fantastic citizen science projects, uh, all sorts of projects that you can take, you yourself can take part. In. You don't need any, um, you know, prior knowledge. And it could be that, and and it started off with astronomy. It was uh, classifying galaxies. Uh, and then they added, you know, solar storms and all sorts of other things. But now that it, it crosses all sorts of different disciplines. So if you're interested in, in astronomy, there's some projects. If you're interested in, you know, kind of like wildlife conservation, there's something, even history, social science, all sorts of things. So that's actually a really great site to, to look out for. All right. So um, thanks, everyone. Um, thanks for being here. And we will see you um, at the end of next month. Yeah. So take care, stay safe, and see you guys. Bye-bye, everybody. Thanks. Bye. Just before you go, can you yes. hear me?